I've met a lot of sailors in my travels, but few who seem to love the simple act of sailing as much as moths. I met moths in the Faroe Islands, and he was kind enough to tell us his story and show us his incredible sailboat. I hope you enjoy the interview and boat tour. I think my first sailing trip was when I was three months old. So um, my parents were <laughs> sailors and had a very small wooden boat when I was born. And um, I was taken to sea almost immediately. Right away. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I almost had to be a sailor. <laughs> How did your parents get into sailing? And I think my, I think it, it came from my mother actually, my mother's background. Her father had a small sailing boat in Esbjerg in Denmark on the west coast in a pretty rough climate and uh, rough seas uh, right outside the harbor. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't do a lot of sailing, but uh, they had a boat and went for some sailing. And, 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 and she liked a sailboat, yeah. yeah. And she liked it. And then as far as I know, she moved to, to Aarhus, where I come from. Then she, she had some friends that did some sailing and she went into the whole thing. And she met my father and he was grown into it some, somehow. And she introduced him. Yeah, I think, I think it was that way around. They had four or five boats during my childhood. Um, all sailboats? Say, yeah, always sailboats. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Did they go on any voyages from Denmark? Or? Yeah, not not very long voyages, but we um, went to Sweden. Really fell in love with Sweden. It's 24 hours of sailing from Aarhus, then you're in the west coast of Sweden, and it's really a cruising paradise. I think I was 11, 12 years old when we sailed to Sweden for the first time. But in Denmark, there's absolutely splendid cruising possibilities too. So really? Wonderful country to, to sail in. So you don't need Sweden to, to fall in love with the cruising lifestyle. So there are a lot of people in Denmark who sail. Sailing yeah. is popular there. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular, uh -huh. yes. Are there marinas? Marinas everywhere. Really? Three or four hours of sailing between almost every marina. Really? <laughs> yeah, wow. there are lots of them. And sailing in Denmark is, is very good also for beginners because it's very easy to sail in Denmark. Mm. We have no rocky coastline except for Bornholm, mm. uh, the Isle of Bornholm mm. in the Baltic. Mm. So if you make a mistake and run aground, it's usually it's sand or mud. And there are no tides, no, almost no currents. No, so, um, really? So you just draw a line from where you where you your home port and to the port you want to go, <laughs> then you just sail when the weather is appropriate. So, so you're never looking at current tables, no, tide no charts. tide tables, all this uh, difficult stuff. You don't have to. Wow. So if there's a if there's a good wind, you sail. If the weather's turning bad mm -hmm. during your your trip, mm. you just go to another marina closer on Anchorage. So it's uh, it's wonderful and and they're very a very lot of small harbors, small marinas, and anchorages and anchorage everywhere. Is, okay. Very, very cozy and nice, and so it's it's a wonderful playground <laughs> for beginners as well as advanced sailors in Denmark. So you were taught how to sail by your parents. Yeah, I kind of was, but I think perhaps it was something in my DNA that actually made me a sailor because. Because I, I think I, I just took over the sailing. Mm. When I was 11, 12 years old, it was almost me that saved the boat. My my mother almost got a little depressed because there was nothing to do for her. <laughs> I ran all over the place. I said, sail. I, <laughs> I um, navigated, I steered the boat. We had almost a fight of who, who was to steer the boat. When you were 12 years old? Yeah, yeah. I was completely caught off. Um, uh, and I, I just, I just have to, I just had to sail. I washed the dishes, and 
No, I didn't. Do, I didn't do the cooking. Well, that was for my mother. <laughs> she must have <laughs> and my father did most of the navigation, but I yeah. was gradually uh, into that business too. So I was really keen of it uh, from the beginning. Um, I sailed uh, the Optimist dinghy yeah. for, for some years, and I really liked having my own boat when I got my Optimist. That was your it, boat. It was me, my boat, and I, I still remember the feeling of leaving the pier and uh, go to go to sea for the first time in my own boat. Wow. Feel the wind and the sails, and wow, it's moving. It's me steering it, and no one else on board. You can get from point A to point B. I'm the captain. I'm the crew. <laughs> this is great. How old were uh, you when you when you got your actually, first boat? I don't remember. I think it was twelve or thirteen. Uh, probably twelve years old. And I felt the satisfaction of having my own boat and feel the movement by the wind and um, it was so great. But what I didn't like about the Optimists mm. was that it was, uh, we were taught to sail the Optimist in a very competitive environment. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, races and uh, that kind of stuff. Mm. And I was never interested in getting there first. Never. I see. Uh, and never since. The journey. I like I like to sail fast, mm -hmm. but I have absolutely no interest in sailing faster mm -hmm. than other people. Mm -hmm. I don't care. They can sail as fast as they want. I like when my boat is optimized, the trim is perfect, and she sails as fast as I can make her sail with the wind I got for the moment. That's great. But if it's taken an hour or two hours or even a day longer to get there, I don't care because I like to sail. Why should I ex escape from sea by getting there very fast? Then I miss some hours of sailing actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a voyage, it's a long distance. Did your parents get that boat for you? Or did you yeah. wish for that boat? Yeah, I, I wished for the boat and they, they bought it for me. And um, they weren't competitive, neither. So they got the most beautiful Optimist. It was light blue, it was wooden, all the others were fiberglass. The sails were three different colors, like a rainbow. Wow. It was so beautiful. And it was extremely heavy and extremely slow. Hmm. So whatever I did, I was absolutely certain to be the last one crossing the line in, in any race I ever participated in. But that was not the reason that I didn't like yeah. to compete or, or race. It was not the reason you that I always got li late, uh, always was the last one. I didn't care. You were I, I had a longer voyage than the others. So that was, that was just great. And it was actually an, a, a case when I was sailing a, a race in the Optimist um, where we came to the to the mark where we were supposed to turn and they just forgot to turn. <laughs> I was caught up sailing. Oh, that was the mark. I just continued. I was dreaming. I sat, I sat with my tiller and my dreams and the sun and the wind and yeah, so the instructors had to, to uh, catch me in their, in their boat and say, turn hey, around. you forgot to turn, my friend. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> so, I was, I was on a voyage. I was not in the race. So the others were. That almost sounds like Bernard Matissier. Yeah, I think. <laughs> he kept on going. I think, yeah, exactly. He forgot to turn too. So, so that was how I how I started. Do you still have that optimist? No, or no. no. I don't remember where it went, but. But you had some years. Yeah, I had some years of, of sailing the Optimist, two or two years, I think, not more than that. Because then I had learned to sail, and I and I sailed my parents' boat actually. What was the next step toward? The, the next step was when I was twenty-six. I think that I bought my first own sailing boat. Wow. Eight, Eighteen feet, Hurley. Hurley. Hurley, yeah. Great little boat. And I was so happy with it. Uh, it was a, a, a dream I, I had had for years that were fulfilled uh, 
with this boat. And I remember my first my first trip um, was a voyage of a week, mm. uh, not further than 50 miles from Aarhus, my home port. It was a small boat. I had only a week. I was completely on my own. And I remember for the whole week, I cried every day of happiness. I remember a whole week of crying. <laughs> I was waking in the morning, I was weeping. Oh, I was <laughs> and I was going to sea, I was weeping. I was just so released and so happy with the freedom I felt with this very little boat, very short distance. Um, it took some time to, time to sail the distance because it was not very fast, it was very slow. But I went just from port to port, day sails all the way. Yeah. And I was so relieved and so happy. So it was obvious that I, yeah. this was what I was supposed to do you in knew. my life. Yeah. You knew at that point. Yeah, I knew. This is what you love. Yeah, yeah. This is the activity that makes me the most happy. <laughs> Nothing can compare to that. And the next step was uh, five years later, I think. No, it was more. I think I have had it for 10 years or so. Um, where I bought this boat. Um, uh, me and my wife had two children at the time. And there was only three births in the in the little this little hurley. So I, I bought this boat. Actually, I I sailed the most. Uh, I sailed alone because my wife is very fond of sailing. She's she, not it's okay of... with her, but. She doesn't love it like the like I do. Yeah. So I was doing a lot of lonely sailing, oh. and I like it. <laughs> I love it. But we needed a boat where we could go as a family too. And I bought this boat, yeah. which is a huge boat, 26 yeah. feet. Ooh. <laughs> 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 and I had the experience again because uh, the experience of relief and happiness again when I sailed my first trip to Sweden. Wow. Um, I, I crossed Kattegat, the sea between Jutland and Sweden, mm -hmm. for the first time by myself. I had did it a couple of times with my parents when I was a child. Yeah. That was 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, now I was, I was on my own. And all my old dreams of long voyages, traveling to foreign countries, crossing oceans, came true when I crossed the Kattegat for the first time by my own. And I saw these rocky coastline rise from the horizon and sail in between the the, um, the, the rocks and I was crying again. Wow. I was, a new a new limit had, had been crossed, a new border had been crossed. I had achieved something really great. So I was crying again from happiness and relief by moving this border. It was fantastic. How long were you there? Five days, I think. Five days and I went back home sailing. because I always had to co coordinate with the family and my work life, and and of course I wanted to have to spend my holiday mainly with my family. Yes. But I needed to have this. Yeah, for for quite a lot of years I had a week every year where I sailed on my own. One week a year. One week a year, where I was completely on my own, yeah. unplugged. Uh, really, really great for me. Not only because I could sail as much as I wanted, um, and that's quite a lot. Um, and the way I wanted, long distances, not going too often to harbor, staying at sea, and that, that kind of sailing, really like. Um, but also being alone, yeah. really great. I can recommend it for all people, I think. What's, it's, what's it like to be single-handed, and what do you what do you like about being single-handed on a on a voyage? Um, I like that I can sail and travel exactly the way I like it. That's of course a freedom. But then, more important than that is that I don't have to relate to anyone. So actually, it's kind of a holiday from being myself. Hmm. And it's really nice to get rid of yourself sometimes. I think I feel I am myself in relation to someone. 
Mm -hmm. Right now I'm myself in relation to you, mm -hmm. I'm myself in relation to my children, my wife, my colleagues, my friends, yeah. uh, my relatives, all kind of people I'm, I'm surrounded by year, all the year round. But when I'm sailing alone, there's no one to relate to. There's no one to relate to at all. And um, there's only me on the boat, yeah. my gear. The sea, the sky, the weather, um, and the voyage. So I, I kind of feel um, absorbed in the voyage. I'm reduced to a, a, a function. Uh, just a, I'm a part of the gear that yeah. makes the voyage possible. Um, it's really a relief. <coughs> I'm only I'm only the man doing the job. Yeah. But I could be anyone. I could be anyone. I could I could be a bastard. I could be a nice guy. I could be sick. I could be <laughs> insane. <laughs> uh, I could be I could be sorry. I could be happy. I could be anything. It doesn't matter. The sea's there. It doesn't care at all. And you have your function. I have my function. I just have to do the job. If it's blowing more, I have to I have to reef. Um, if there's a wind shift, I have to change the sailing, the trim of the sails. I have to navigate, I have to cook, wash dishes, make the everyday, everyday life work at sea. But I don't have to be someone. Maybe a lot of people don't get to experience that. No. That, that feeling of being sort of that one with themselves and not always <coughs> interacting with other people but rather just being on their own in their own element yeah and I, I think lots of people are afraid yeah. of being alone and not related to other people they're very afraid of it I don't know if they might get another experience if they actually did it Perhaps they would, um, but I, I feel the most uh, secure and and uh, comfortable with myself when I'm alone. Yeah. Um, actually, I I never feel lonesome when I'm alone. Yeah. At sea, um, I often do when I'm together with people. But um, the the best way I can <laughs> I can. Uh, prevent myself from feeling lonesome is actually to be alone and get to see. So that's um, that's my benefit of traveling alone. I love that's it. It's part of why you do it. Yeah, it's a part of why I do it. Yeah. Um, and of course also I like the sailing, my, uh, the sailing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to handle the boat, I like to navigate, I like to react and respond to changes in weather and sea conditions all that kind of stuff but I, I don't know anyone that likes it like I do so I have I have actually no one to share that that uh, joy with mm. perhaps if I had a couple of, of good friends yeah. or my wife or my children um, who loved it as much as I do perhaps it would be great to share the experience I don't know but no, that's just not the case. Um, and the only thing I, I can really hate about sailing is when trying to share the experience with someone that actually doesn't uh, like it. Mm. Because it's impossible. Um, if you don't like to sail, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Stay ashore. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, for years I tried to drag my wife aboard and um, to make her, to make her love be happy and uh, love it and that kind of stuff. And of course, it didn't work. It never does. I've never, never heard of a, a success story about that. But um, when I finally gave up and just went to sea alone, and let her stay back home and be happy doing what she liked to do, to do 
then she she actually um, got a bit interested in sailing. Really? Yeah, because she didn't have to. Hey. Yeah, and that, that made that made all the difference. That's interesting. And that yeah, and then she she a couple of years ago um, came to the got the feeling that she actually wanted to learn a bit about sailing. And I learned her a bit, and we sailed together. And last year we did this circumnavigation of England, four months which is together, huge. which is actually kind of a miracle yeah. that it was possible to do this for four months in a cold climate. Right, and, and we were happy, both anymore. of us, uh, with the trip. Your two sons were with you, yeah, also. They were with us all the way, and it was a great family experience for all of us. Sailing around England, were they mostly day sails or short hops? Yeah, it was mostly day sails, yes. Because it has to be family friendly. Yes, yeah. But uh, we had the, we, we crossed the North Sea, of course, that was uh, three days. Um, and then we had four or five day and night sails, uh, except from, from the North Sea crossing. Because it was necessary when we crossed the English Channel or uh, mm -hmm. the St. George Channel, and uh, we had to do some long distances, but that was no problem at all. So it was exciting, and my wife liked the the night the night sails too, actually. Really? Yeah. Huh. Um, what did you like? Like, like she liked it, like an experience to have, um, perhaps not as a lifestyle, and it is. She also likes to sleep, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just being there in the cockpit and in the complete darkness of late September and then in the North Sea, wow. it's very dark. Yeah. And watch the lights in the dark and uh, the big seas coming. You can't see them, but the roll onto the boat and it's yeah, it's very exciting, very beautiful. So she did, she did like it. Yeah, your wife did see, yeah. see beauty. I, I don't want to say she, she, perhaps she, she didn't love it. No, but she she liked it as an experience. It wasn't life. forever. It was no, no, just no. It was not a lifestyle right. for her, but it's what is as an experience that it was okay. What was it like when you, as a family, completed this four month circumnavigation? Where was everybody happy that it was it was over, or or were you? I think we we had very different feelings about it. Yeah. Like different people always have different feelings about everything. Mm. Um, uh, we didn't we didn't feel the same. I think the children no the children were very relieved that they at last got back home <laughs> to their to their to their pals and their school and uh, I don't think they like going to school. They're very odd children, but uh, <laughs> but. Um, um, and my wife was happy with the voyage. She was also happy getting back in contact with all her friends um, and uh, back to work. Um, she likes her work too. And uh, um, I like that too, to get back to my, my friends and my work. It was, it was okay. But if someone had told me two hours after are returning to to Aarhus, that I had another four months for cruising, I would just have said, "Yes, wow. here we go." <laughs> I would have bought some fresh milk, fresh cream, yeah, recharged the batteries for two hours more, and we were off. It would be completely fine with me. So I could live aboard. I could live my life. Mm -hmm. Cruising, voyaging, exploring yeah. full time all year. So, my life is a kind of a, a compromise, like mm -hmm. most people's mm -hmm. life are. Mm -hmm. Because I also want to have a meaningful work life, I also want to have a family. I've been forced to kind of invent a cruising lifestyle in between. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's working quite good actually. Yeah. I'm lucky I have a, a, a very long period in, during the summer mm -hmm. where I don't have to work. Um, I'm teaching on a music school in Aarhus. Really? Um, and there are six, six weeks, six to seven weeks every year and during the summer where there's no teaching. 
Um, I could play. I'm a violinist. I could, I could play concerts. I could do kinds of stuff to earn money. But I don't have to if I don't want to. During the summer period, I, there's actually some opportunities to cruise, and I would like to to sail for all six weeks. I seldom do because my family also want to do other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this year, for instance, mm -hmm. I'm cruising for almost six weeks here to the Faroes. I, I sailed the boat to here. Yes. Uh, took ten days, and then the family got here by plane. Wow. And we've been cruising here for three weeks uh, between all the marvelous islands of the Faroes. Um, then my wife left a couple of days ago because she couldn't stand the cold anymore. Mm -hmm. And the children will go back by plane uh, in two days, and then I sail back home again alone. So we have my my long, yeah. lonely voyage yeah. at sea, which makes me happy. Yeah. I'm exploring a complete new country, wonderful nature, yeah. together with my family, together with my my children, and then I have the long, lonely voyage back home again. So that's just perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, really perfect. It's not all or nothing. I no. Mean, no, it doesn't have to no. be. People can have lives ashore and family life and work life and have a cruising life component as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it, it might be possible. Yeah. Um, and I think people really should consider making it possible. Um, because for most people it's, it's everything or nothing. <laughs> Um, lots of people dream of going cruising. The circumnavigation of the world will always be in in your mind as a dream, yeah. very distant dream. Yeah. But then that's not possible because you have a family, you have work, you have uh, you have to earn money. Your boat isn't big enough. It's not strong enough. It's not very well equipped yet. Um, you can create lots of obstacles for fulfilling your dream sure. in your mind. Yeah. Um, and if if the dream is to circumnavigate the world in a big sailing boat, having plenty of time to do it, plenty of money, mm -hmm. um, then you probably won't ever go anywhere. Um, but if you think, how can I fulfill my dream pocket size, mm -hmm. then you have a chance. Um, and I think when I, every time I cross an ocean, I'm getting happy. Perhaps the ocean is only Kattegat. I cried from happiness when crossing Kattegat for the first time. <laughs> when I for the first time sailed alone from Denmark to the Shetland Islands five years ago. I sailed there, I was there for five days and sailed back again. When I sailed into the harbor of Lovik, on the Shetland Islands, I cried again. <laughs> it's not that it's a goal to cry, but it, <laughs> but it just shows me that I had fulfilled the dream. I crossed the North Sea, and three weeks ago, when I came to the Faroe Islands alone, having had a four-day sail from Norway to here in a row, the North Sea, the North Atlantic to here, I cried again because I had moved yeah, another limit, I crossed different. another border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had grown yeah. bigger in my it's mind like because I had sailed further. Yeah. So just a little further than you would normally do can make quite a big difference in your mind, of your, your thinking of your possibilities and your limitations mm -hmm. will change quite dramatically. And you don't have to circumnavigate the world I have circumnavigated England with my family. That makes me a sailor. I don't have to circumnavigate the world. I would like to someday, um, but probably I will never do that. You don't need to sail. But I'm a sailor them. anyway, yeah. and I'm moving limits. I'm crossing borders. Um, I'm breaking down limitations all the time. Pocket size. And that's possible. <laughs>